Hi, Carolyn here. Now, if you're like me, you bought a nice pair of headphones and a nice amp to get the most out of them, and a nice DAC to get the most out of that, and then another pair of headphones, and another amp, and another DAC, and maybe you've sold something off to pay for another upgrade, and so on and so on, until you've spent a few thousand dollars. And if you're not crazy like I am, uh, then you might want just one or one unit which you can plug in your computer, your headphones, and get good music. But there are quite a variety of those things depending on your budget. So today I thought I'd look at three different ones, the ones I have in front of me, and uh, give you an overview of each. Now, the unique uh, thing about all of them is that they use the ESS Tech ES9018 digital to analog chip. Now, that particular chip, if you're not familiar, is quite famous nowadays as it's used in quite a lot of high-end DACs and has become quite popular due to the, the good sound that it can be made to produce. However, those DACs can range in price from a few hundred dollars to a few thousand, or many thousands of dollars. So, the variety I have here today consists of the Audio GD NFB10 ES2, this one here at $680 the Anedio D2 at $1,470 or about $150 less if you buy a refurbished unit and the one I have on top here which is the Reason Essence Invicta and that is $5 shy of $5,000. Now, <clears throat> the big deal about each of these individually is the NFB10 ES2 for its money gives you balanced output both in the DAC and the uh, headphone amp and digital volume control and other things is designed to be the bargain value one. Uh, the Anedio D2 has, is from a small company that's become quite famous. It has really excellent measurements and uh, supposed to be really clear sounding and a very good bang for your buck. And uh, although no balanced headphone out, it's still supposed to be have a, a good headphone output. And the reason essence in Victor, the guys behind this company are the from the ES tech, ESS Tech themselves, they are from the company basically that made the DAC chip, so they should know how to do it properly. Now the chip itself, uh, as one manufacturer put to me, is like a Ferrari. If you don't use good parts, it doesn't sound good. And in my experience, that's been absolutely true. Um, uh, despite it being, I think, about $50 a piece to buy just the chip, whereas normal DAC chips, you know, can be $2 a piece. Um, if it's not done well, it doesn't. the music doesn't sound great. So I am looked at how each of these sounded despite their price and the results are of course not surprisingly that they sound better as the price goes up but also there are other factors about this desi the, these designs that make them interesting so let's have a look at each of them individually okay first up let's have a look at the Audio GD NFB10 ES2 try saying that five times fast so uh, to begin with I'm going to start from the back rather than the front on the back, in the uh, middle, we have our inputs, and on either side, uh, the left and right channel outputs. Uh, you'll notice, of course, the usual kind of inputs are, are the uh, Toslink Optical, SPDIF with an RCA plug, optionally available with a, a BNC plug on request at the time of ordering, and the USB 32 input. Now, the uh, uh, good thing about this is Recently, Audio GD has started using a USB chip from VIA, VIA, the, uh, whom we normally associate with uh, computer parts manufacturing <coughs> and motherboards. And that chip is a multimedia chip where they've uh, uh, rem removed all the unnecessary features from the firmware to give it better performance. And the result of that is, uh, is actually very, very good. It can take up to 384K. Uh, uh, file input, so <clears throat> that's equivalent to, I think, what was it, a, a CD quality over sampled eight times or something like that, or maybe it was uh, 48k times eight. My mathematics is is a bit shot, so forgive me if I've got that wrong. Uh, outputs is a bit un are a bit unusual. You'll see three rather than the usual two: single ended left and right, balanced left and right, and uh, Audio GD has a system called ACSS, which you'll see the sockets for here. Um, the amplification side, rather like uh, companies like Krell and Bakun, uses a uh, current gain stage. And you can connect that to another, say a power amp or something, which uses a, a current gain stage as well, directly through the, the current gain stage, rather than the, the normal voltage 
outputs, and that's designed for better sound. Okay, <clears throat> so on to the front. Uh, quite a lot of buttons on the front here. Power, uh, six controls for the, uh, the various bits and pieces, <clears throat> and of course balanced headphone output. So for your $680 you can get uh, a, a balance stamp, which some people think is a, a big deal. So if you have, you have to re-terminate your headphones like I did with a 4-pin XLR. And like so, good old metric lock-in lock -in jack. Or if you've only got you know, regular single-ended headphones, that's no problem too. Just plug them in through the uh, lock-in jack on the other side, which is nice and sturdy. Or just use an adapter if you've got IEMs and you want a, a 3.5. So that's the front panel. Now to see what the buttons do, let me just get a uh, plugger in here. <clears throat> switch on. Now, here we go, NFB10. Uh, the NFB10 reuses cases from the previous model, so one of the, at least one of the labels is wrong. Rather than a conventional volume control, which will add a little bit of noise and a little bit of uh, discoloration to the, the sound, uh, Audio GD uses uh, relays and resistors as a volume system. So if I, if I change the volume now, you can hear the clicking. The relays are uh, switching resistors. There are 79 volume steps, which I was almost set at, um, and you have you can switch between. Uh, it's set at P for preamp. You can switch to headphone amp output or preamp output, and it's controlled by the same same volume. Uh, gain also affects both headphones and preamp output, high or low. So that's got a fair fair range between high and low. So. It's also, act, I found, as a, uh, especially as a preamp, a very good uh, quick semi-muting switch. So if I was on high gain, I was playing some music, and you know, I wanted to uh, drop the volume down significantly, I just switch it to uh, low gain there. Now, uh, what says filter on here? The older versions of this uh, amp would uh, had the uh, Wolfson WM8741 uh, digital converter chip. And that has a number of filters. If you don't know much about digital filters, don't worry too much. Uh, basically, because, say, uh, especially CD quality audio has to cut off at 22.05 uh, kilohertz, otherwise, because there's nothing beyond that frequency it can uh, record, it, um, you have to have some kind of filter which just you know, cuts it off straight, usually. But that introduces different kinds of uh, distortion uh, up in the high frequency ranges. So. For many years, people have been trying to work out better filters than um, the normal uh, straight cutoff, and uh, that used to select that. But uh, with the, there are only a couple of filters with the um, the Sabre chips, so this has been repurposed as a display dimmer, which I certainly appreciate. But if the display is dim, you can still switch everything as as you like, and it will flash the display to indicate that it's switched. Um, and if you're like me. You know, I have a room full of computer gadgets and you name it. And being able, and, and, and you know, my room just, if you turn the light off at night, it just glows blue. <clears throat> and it gets annoying after a while with the blue LED. So being able to dim that is actually a pretty cool feature. Uh, I certainly appreciate it given, given how my room looks in the evening. Um, so that's the front of the unit. Uh, generally now onto sound. The sound is, it's, it's voiced neutral, that is, you know, dead flat. It's not designed to be, uh, you know, no coloration at all. Uh, but generally, still, um, especially using the USB 32 input, the the quality of the uh, sound is is kind of very very clean and, and even. No, and doesn't sound. There's no harshness. There's no digital harshness that I can pick up. Although there are people who think that anything uh, along they who think anything other than a, a not oversampling DAC is uh, is harsh sounding. And more than enough power to drive, you know, good old LCD3s, which we've got sitting over here. Um, no problem ranging everything from IEMs through to high impedance headphones. I've tried bright headphones, it doesn't sound too, it doesn't have any kind of brightness that uh, I'd find troublesome. Uh, the only thing I can think of is that, uh, you know, of course, some people might find, might find flat a little bit too boring. But no trouble catching up, no trouble with fast music, no trouble with uh, very dynamic music at all, even with the. Um, um, uh, orthodynamic 
plainer headphones. Uh, generally all good good sound and I had it in my living room with a pair of Emotiva 4s and uh, that was a really good combo especially if you if your total spend is you know a thousand dollars for a especially a near field rig with a pair of active speakers that makes a really really good combination and uh, the uh, USB 32 also accepts uh, squeeze box touch input they've just updated the firmware for that and uh, I used it with a, 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 sque a, a fake squeeze box, you could say, a, a Raspberry Pi with the, the relevant software on there, and, and that was really fantastic. So that's the uh, Audio GD NFB 10 ES2. I said that correctly this time. One more thing I forgot to mention is the remote control. It comes with a free remote control, which is a very basic plastic thing, but which does the job. Um, the, the old remotes were big and heavy in aluminium and you can still get them but I think this is perfect so it has it has a lot of buttons on here for it covers I guess all their equipment so some of them the buttons don't do anything but it does all the main features you can select the uh, input you can you know change the volume change as required it will you know you can change all the features there we go and yeah that's a useful piece of kit. So, especially in my living room, I really appreciate that being able to uh, use it with the speakers and turn the volume down. Or, as I as I said before, being able to switch from high to low gain quickly to dim to, to cut the volume down enough to uh, speak to someone if I turn it up a bit.